Let us pray. Almighty and most gracious Father, we thank you for the glory of this day as we gather in your holy name to serve you who is the way, the truth, and the life. Guide us by the power of your Holy Spirit that we may always sing your praises and be up to the power of your presence in our life. This we pray and ask always through Jesus Christ our Savior and our Lord. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse our hearts by the Cleanse our thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah, Lord, we praise your holy name. Glory, glory, hallelujah, Lord, we praise your holy name. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. everlasting life. Grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 31, 1 through 5, 15 to 16. We should read responsively. 
In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they may secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Together now. Make, make your, your face, face to shine, shine upon your servant and, and in your, your loving kindness, kindness save, save me. me. Glory, Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now and, and forever shall. Forever. Amen. Amen. reading from the first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word and they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
congregation to stand and join us in the sequence hymn, Jesus Lives Like Terrors Now. <laughs> disciples do not let your hearts be troubled believe in God believe also in me for in my father's house there are many dwelling places and if it were not so would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am there you may be also and you know the way to the place where I am going Thomas said to him Lord we do not know where you are going how can we know the way Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Alleluia. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
God is with us. 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 So come to him. To that living stone, rejected by men, but in God's sight, chosen and precious. And like living stones, be yourself built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. In the name of the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In these few verses that I quoted from today's epistle, St. Peter has outlined for us what might correctly be referred to as the functional nature of the church, the functional nature of the church. He begins by referring to the Christian as a living stone. And the church, the spiritual house, is a living edifice into which the Christian is built. Clearly what this means is that Christianity is meant to be community, to be community together. The individual Christian finds his or her true place only when we are incorporated and built into that edifice we call the church. A brick, for example, by itself is generally useless. It becomes of use only when it is put together with other bricks and incorporated into a structure such as a building. Then it helps to provide a service. It has a purpose. It has a meaning. In the same way, if the individual Christian is to realize their true destiny, which is the ministry of Christ, then we cannot remain out here alone, but must be built into the fabric of the church. We must be in community. The reality of this truth should hit square in the face of those who hold to the absurd concept of an individualistic Christianity. The theologian C.E.B. Cornfield correctly states that the freelance maverick Christian who would be a Christian but is too superior to belong to the visible church upon earth in one of its forms is simply a contradiction in terms. The person, and we all know a few, who says they don't need to go to church to pray and to worship God, for they could do that just as well in their home. They can turn on their computer or their TV and catch a great soul service, or great hymns and all the things and sing and praise God right there and do all that just by themselves. Well, the reality is, uh-uh, you're kidding yourself. You're kidding yourself. It's like the people who say they... Doctor tells them to go out and you got to exercise. You got to exercise a little more. Oh, we all know that. Got to exercise, get the bones moving and things like that. So they go out and spend uh, ex expensive money for uh, treadmills and stationary bikes. And for about a good month or two, boy, they're really working out, things like that. But when there's nobody around to encourage them, there's always some excuse. Well, I'm a little tired today. Uh, my arthritis is acting up a little bit and uh, I'll do it tomorrow. And tomorrow never comes. Well, I got some amens out there. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. All right now. Uh -huh. So you know, it's the same way when we divorce ourselves from the community of the church. And we're just out there ourselves. We lose in so many ways in what the Lord is trying to accomplish in us. We are meant to be in community. People with this other concept have missed the whole point of Christianity. Christianity is community. And it is in this community of Christ that we find our mission. We find our value. We find our worth as human beings in a life wonderfully created for people to work together to help other people. Christianity is community within the fellowship of the church. And I thought it was so wonderful that this particular epistle appears this Sunday. We're here in our diocese. We're celebrating ECS Sunday, Episcopal Community Services Sunday. 
a time when we recognize the opportunity as a worshiping community to pull our resources together for the purpose of helping, helping each church work and reach out into their communities with the love of Jesus to those who are in need. That's what ECS is all about. And hopefully we in Christ the King will be supportive of our diocesan EC, ECS because there may be a point where we will need some grants from ECS to do the work of outreach in the community here in, in Willingboro. And it's a part of it, but that's the whole meaning is that's what happens when we work together in community. Not only as a church, but as a diocese, we can reach out with the love of Jesus and do even more and even greater things. I was thinking about this all the, the other day. I was watching the news, and a doctor came on and said something that was pretty shocking to me. And I don't know why it should have been. I should have sort of realized it, but I, I, I didn't. Because we all know what the realities of what smoking and drinking can do to our bodies. You smoke a whole lot, of course, you're going to mess with the, your breathing and your lungs and all that and other things. And drink too much, you're going to mess with your liver and some other things. But I was shocked to find out that there's one other thing that can do even more damage to the body, even more than smoking and drinking. Not that you should smoke or drink, but I'll tell you, anyhow. <laughs> and it's, he said, loneliness. Loneliness can do more damage than sometimes than smoking and drinking can do to your body. And as I thought about this, yes. And indeed, we experienced this in so many ways during the pandemic. We had to do social distancing. And indeed, many committed suicide because there was no one to talk to, really. And I was surprised at this because in this modern age where we've got these computers and these uh, great phones and all these things, and you can go anywhere, and, and whether it's the, uh, uh, the mall or the supermarket, and everybody is down on their phone talking to somebody, things like that, supposedly communicating. And what it really tells me is that nothing replaces that in-person opportunity, that handshake, that hug of looking into somebody's eyes, not on a screen, but visibly, makes a difference. Loneliness can kill. And Jesus does not want us to be lonely, and that's why we have the church. The church is about community, people coming together in love, showing the love of Jesus to others. See, the second point St. Peter was making in today's epistle as to the nature of the church is that its people are to see themselves as part of a holy priesthood. Now there are two great characteristics of priesthood that should always be remembered. One is to be like a bridge builder, building a way for others to come to God. And the other is to be one who is constantly bringing an offering to God. Christians, because we, through Christ, have access to God, must always seek ways of bringing others to him, making them part of the fellowship and worship of his community, the church. This is what we call, in so many words, evangelism. Telling the truth about Jesus Christ and how we do it serves as a way of helping others know the good news of access to God through Christ. Evangelism is simply just our witness of what other way we can of saying how much Jesus Christ means in our life, how much he has done for us over the years, just telling somebody about it. We don't have to be a preacher. We don't have to be a great orator. We don't have to stomp and jump up and down. We just have to be a witness of what the Lord has done in our life. So many of our churches and our dioceses and actually throughout this country are dying because they haven't been doing any evangelism, haven't been telling anybody about anything. What has happened is that it ends up that it becomes a social club for a few families, and basically that's it. When them families die off, so does the church. The thing is that we are in community to reach out, to tell others about the good news of God in Christ. Secondly, each of us as Christians are part of this holy priesthood 
because we should constantly be bringing ourselves as an offering to God. Bringing ourselves as an offering to God. We live to serve God for it is in that service that we find our true self, we find life, and we have, as Jesus has said, we have it abundantly. And in that process, we come to know the real Savior, Jesus Christ. If you want a perfect example, just read the life of St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis was born into an aristocratic family. He had this, that, and everything that he, uh, ever, most of us would ever want. He was feeling good, didn't have to get up in the day or do anything. It was all taken care of. He was living a life of being served. But something was missing in Francis' life. And so he decided to give it all up, give up all the riches, leave the riches of his family and go out into the world and do something else. And what he found, that in a life of service, he found joy. He found a reason for living. He found a reason to keep on going each and every day. And the latter part of the prayer that's often associated with his name, we hear it say, it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying to sin that we are raised to eternal life. Indeed, service to God can be more of an attitude than anything else. If, for instance, I look at my life and say, barring any foreseen tragedies, I may have 10 more years of labor before I can truly and really retire. If that's the case, if that's my thought, then I'm going to get depressed real quick. <laughs> but if I say, I have at least 10 more years to encourage the children, to feed the hungry, to maybe start up a whole brand new choir, to find <coughs> shelter for the homeless, to see that glimmer of hope in the person's eyes who has just met the risen Lord, then my attitude is upbeat. Then I have a reason to keep on keeping on, in regardless of whatever I may face, knowing that my Lord, who loved me so much, has given me all that I need to keep on keeping on. See, what God desires is the love of our hearts and the service of our lives. That is the perfect sacrifice which we all must be willing to make. In the remaining point about the functional nature of the church that St. Peter makes is that the church is to tell forth the excellence of God. To tell forth the excellence of God. That is to say it is to witness to others concerning the mighty acts of God. By our very life, every more than by our words, we are to be a living witness of what God has done for each of us. Yes, we live in a world with its share of so-called heroes, but when all is said and done, there is only one who can lead our souls from the temporal to the eternal, from disgrace to amazing grace, from death to the realization of the new life. I believe that life is such a structure that in time, everyone realizes the need for contact with that personal savior who can lift our hearts and souls above the struggles and lead us where we could never get to on our own. It is also in these kind of moments of realization that people will often cast a wandering eye toward the church to see if there is something there to give them hope, to give them something to believe in. And that's the time we want to be there, to be able to invite them in, to come on in, to be part of the fellowship, to be part of the community, to be part of the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ. This is where you can find hope. This is where you can find a reason to keep on keeping on. This is where you will find what God has called you to do. That's when We've got to be on our P's and Q's and ready to bring them in. And that's at this time, when I think about the very fact that this is ECS Sunday, I would like if you all would join me on page, oh, there it is, page eight, right below the sermon, 
You all should have that anyhow, right? <laughs> and let's say together the collect for ECS Sunday. <clears throat> now let's pray. Compassionate God, you called us to establish Episcopal Community Services of the Diocese of New Jersey, endow us with the vision to balance charitable giving with advocating justice so that both the source and symptoms of oppression will be overcome through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Indeed, thus the church as the community of the faithful must always be ready, be ready to show the world what the risen Lord has done for and means to us. Leading not so much by what we say, because there are always someone who wants to give advice, but by what we do. For again, let us never forget that it is in the actions of our service to others that we will continually meet and glorify Jesus Christ as the risen Lord. For as Jesus said in today's gospel, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Follow Jesus to that goodness of life, to the Father who has prepared a place for us, a reason for us to hope, a reason for us to keep on keeping on in the midst of all that we face. The Lord has prepared a place for us. Let's prepare a place for others that they may come and worship with us. Amen. Amen. Now unto God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we ascribe what is most justly due, all might, majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth this day, now, and forevermore. Amen. Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of saints. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For our presiding bishop, our bishops, and all other bishops and other ministers, especially Canon Wynne, Reverend Savage, and Father Radix. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. 
Remembering as always in our prayers, those of our church family who may be ill or struggling in any way, we continue to pray for Ms. Josephine White as she continues to recuperate from the operation. We pray for others who have been through trials and some tribulations over this past month. The power of Jesus Christ reach out and touch them and this is their time and hour of need. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For the goodness of this day, for our congregation here gathered, for our choir, for all who are singing the praises of the Lord. We give God thanks for the ministry in our diocese, especially the work of the Episcopal Community Service and what it means for us in the future. We give thanks to God for the opportunities we have to continue to serve and be part of this community. We will exalt you, O oh God, Lord. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Let's remember, especially in our prayers, all those whose lives have been taken because of gun violence in our country, those who recently lost in the recent mass shootings. Peace will prevail, and the power of Christ will bring people to you have more moral responsibilities. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Have, have mercy upon, upon us, most, most merciful Father. Father. In, In your compassion, compassion forgive us our sins, sins known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, I have mercy on you. Forgive you of all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. I invite you as you are able to stand as we share the, the peace. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy, mm -hmm. inspired by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore pursue the things that make for peace and build up a common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace.
Good morning, Christ the King. Good morning, Max. I greet you in the name of Jesus. We welcome you and so glad that you have joined us this morning, whether it is in person physically or on Zoom, and we are so glad that you share this time with us. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> The building fund envelope. The church building fund is set up to track the donations and expenses of improvement of the church's building. In addition, the fund maintains an ongoing building fund in order to have money available for emergency repairs to the existing buildings. So the fund has about $7,150.50, which is far below our projections due to the numerous improvements that need undertaking. So we urgently um, asked all parishioners to contribute generously to the fund by using your building fund envelopes. The Men of Christ the King monthly meeting is held the second Saturday every month at 10 a.m. on Zoom. All Men of Christ the King are members of this group and are expected to attend. Next meeting is May 14th at 10 a.m. Also today, the ECW will be having their meeting on Maxine C. Harvey's Zoom at 1 <laughs> o'clock p.m. Please be on time. The choir, Christ the King Choir Practice, I believe that is May 27th. 27. Uh, please be on time. Also, you are asked to join the choir. Um, all new members are welcome. And as they state, you will be so glad that you did. Please read in the bulletin week five reflections on the resurrection and it gives a lot of information. In memorial, it is with deepest sorrow that we inform you of the passing of Hildereen Smith, mother of Mrs. Gilda Butcher, a parishioner. Our thoughts and prayers are with Gilda Butcher and her family. Also, we have received a thank you note, dear Christ the King slash ECW, Thank you for your support during our difficult time. Your prayers, visit, calls, flowers, and goodies were appreciated very much. Love, Frida, Oasin, and family, Rita, Julie, Sandy, Keith, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. Also in the bulletin is a very detailed message in the Bishop's Corner. Please read that information. Also today, at four o'clock, um, it is the Earth and Heaven Ring Evening Prayer Service for Reparations. Um, this is a special evening prayer service for healing and gospel justice and in recognition of Bishop Stokes' strong support for racial justice ministries. So the information is in your bulletin. Also, there's a detailed article in the bulletin of King Charles III's coronation, um, as it states, will was to be a Christian call to serve while including multi-faith leaders. So please read all of that detailed information. As Canon Wynn stated, ECS Sunday, together we are stronger. The information is in the bulletin. If you are interested for more information, it gives a link for you to contact them and they state we can do so much more because of you so please check that out the christ the king episcopal church women's mother's day gift basket raffle which will be pulled next sunday the cost is ten dollars look at all the contents in there that we just know you will love also we know that you would love to purchase a raffle for some loved one in your family or ladies if you just want to purchase a raffle for yourself so please see marcel arthur or rose marie smith if you would like to purchase a raffle christ the king i say have a happy blessed healthy and safe week Peace and blessings to all. Amen. Amen.
morning. Good morning. morning. Those that are here with us and those that are on Zoom, good morning to you all. Um, not in the bulletin this week, but still continuing, is the family, Christ the King family feud will continue. Uh, we got started yesterday. I know some of you were distracted by all the festivities over in England, but I thank those that were able to come out and we got started planting a few um, flowers um, back in the Memorial Garden area. Um, if you're not into flowering, um, digging and all that kind of stuff, your donations is greatly appreciated. You can just take an envelope, put your name on the envelope, put your donation in there and mark for beautification um, flower family feud and we will purchase flowers and put them out. But the feud does continue. We need your help to uh, let the community know that we're here. You know, behind, behind these red doors, there's more going on. And curb appeal is a very important thing. When you see something beautiful, you're going to pull over, you're going to stop. You may stop, you may want to come in. So we have to start with curb appeal to help get folks in here, you know, to uh, help with uh, growing our church, which we definitely um, are working on. Also, I want to remind all the ladies in the church that this coming Saturday, May the 12th, May the 13th, is the Women's Day Tea, sponsored by Martha and Kim Johnson. If you have not RSVP'd, please do so by Wednesday at the latest. They need a count if you want to eat. <laughs> so please RSVP to Martha uh, either today or at least by Wednesday to let them know, her and her daughter-in-law Kim, that, they, that you will be attending the tea. The tea is open to all women of the church. So um, this is a love gift to you. Thank you. Have a blessed day and a good week. And don't forget to drop those flowers off, mulch, dirt, whatever you got to give. We need it in the garden. Dirt? <laughs> Money. <laughs> Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. We now have the offertory anthem. I shall wear a 
congregation stand and join us in the offertory hymn, Holy God, we praise thy name.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is a true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing the hymn, this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and love which you have made known to us in creation, in, calling, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, O Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take Eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
Yeah. 
celebrating birthdays or anniversaries or may have to travel this week and notice the surprise we've got a bunch of folks having birthdays at the end of the month nobody in the middle of the month what's going on here <laughs> but anyhow just in case we missed it and you're having a birthday we're going to pray for you. watch over your children O oh lord as their days increase bless and guide them wherever they may be Strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful, raise them up should they fall. And in their heart, may your peace, which passeth all understanding, abide all the days of their life. And this we ask, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Remembering those who may be celebrating wedding anniversaries. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with continued favor, we pray upon your servants, who may be celebrating the joy and blessing of a wedding anniversary. Grant they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. 
This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Those who may be traveling this week, O God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation's presence we find wherever we go, preserve your servants who must travel this week. Surround them, we pray, with your loving care. Protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end, returning them home safely to us, we pray. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us continue to pray for those we love, those who may be struggling in our families at this time, those who have asked for prayer. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to thy never-failing care and love for this life and for the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. Strengthen them, O Heavenly Father, let the power of your eternal blessing be upon them and lift them up. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us continue to pray for children. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joy and care of children. Give us calm, strength, and patience, wisdom as we bring them up, that we may teach them to love whatever is just and true and good, following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And on this easier Sunday, let's pray for families. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who set us the solitary in families, we commend to thy continual care the homes in which your people dwell. Put far from them, we humbly ask, every root of bitterness, the desire of vain glory in the pride of life. Fill them instead with faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness. Knit together in constant affliction those who in holy wedlock have been made one flesh. Turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the hearts of the children to the parents. And so enkindle fervent charity among us all that we may evermore be kindly affectionate one to another this we humbly pray always, in the name of he who died, yet was raised for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. As always, let us pray for our country. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech you that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought hither out of many kindred and tongue. Endure the spirit of wisdom those to whom in your name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to your law we may show forth your praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness. And in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in you to fail. All which we humbly ask through him who died, it was raised for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. And let us pray our prayer of thanksgiving. It's found in our bulletins on page 17. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. As a, just before I do the blessing, just to say that um, I'm, I'll be attending the service at 4 p.m. today. If you are interested, just come and just call me. My number is in the bulletin. And you can just come and park up and we drive together down to Trenton. Mm -hmm. I, I'm looking for company. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I have to be honest. <laughs> uh, Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace, his shalom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Let us go forth in the in name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Thanks be to God. God. Closing him, leaning on the everlasting arm. Yeah. 
Yes, Lord, you've been my friend, my friend. You've been my friend. I just want to thank you. God, we have heard your word. Mm -hmm. We have feasted at your table. Go now with us that they will see that we were with you as we proclaim you in the community, in our families, our lives. Go with us. Grant us courage to fulfill your will. And bless all our actions with your most gracious favor. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.